Hey, happy Friday. This week we'll talk about how we're all doomed if ARM gets sold to the wrong company. We'll talk about how Oppo's 125 watt fast charger is even more impressive than it sounds. And of course, we'll also talk about Twitter's epic security blunder. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. My pick of the week is going to be SoftBank exploring the sale of ARM. And just to give some background information here, SoftBank is a huge Japanese conglomerate. They are a massive investor into a lot of companies from Uber to Alibaba, WeWork, a lot of them. And about four years ago, they purchased ARM Holdings, a British chip design company, for 32 billion US dollars. ARM Holdings makes the chip designs that the majority of mobile chips are actually based off, and those mobile chips then power the majority of mobile devices, smartphones, smartwatches, smart anything, lately even laptops. And ARM has been a relatively good and fair supplier so far, and that's what might change now. SoftBank, the current owner of ARM, is having huge financial troubles because their other investments like WeWork, like Oyo, well, those have kind of collapsed, so they really need cash. And one of the ways they're thinking about getting that cash is by turning ARM into cash, either by selling it to a private company or by putting it on the stock exchange and basically turning it into an independent company. Selling ARM to the wrong buyer, for example, Google, Apple, Qualcomm, Huawei, well, that could cause huge problems because the buyer could then simply decide to stop licensing ARM stuff to their competitors and basically drive them out of business or the government of the buyer could force the buyer to do that. Either way, that could basically take out huge tech companies single-handedly. Just imagine hypothetically Huawei buying ARM and basically going like, you know what, you guys are not letting us have access to Google services. So in exchange, we're just going to revoke all of your ARM licenses. So, you know, goodbye Qualcomm, goodbye MediaTek, goodbye Samsung, you all are not making ARM chips anymore. Or imagine, for example, Qualcomm buying ARM and basically becoming an even bigger monopoly than they already are. There's many scenarios that could go wrong. 2020 is real and, and you know, impending doom seems highly probable at any point. But I really hope that SoftBank can avoid this by either keeping ARM for themselves or by putting it on a stock exchange instead. Okay, my win of the week is going to be Oppo's incredibly impressive 125 watt wired charger and 65 watt wireless charger. And, you know, just to put this into perspective, my Surface Pro has 65 watt charging and my 15 inch MacBook Pro has an 87 watt charger, which means that Oppo is now charging phones basically twice as fast as laptops with actual fast charging built in. A full charge will apparently happen in under 20 minutes, heat shouldn't go above 40 degrees Celsius, and this tech should apparently even maintain battery health better than other slower chargers. Oppo's been a little vague on the technical details, but from what I can tell, it works more or less with the same core principles as SuperVOOC. I've made a whole explainer video of that on my main channel, so if you haven't seen that yet, it's going to be linked in one of these corners, and I've also linked to the actual Oppo blog post down in the description. And there's two more little details that I think Oppo hasn't actually hyped up enough. And one of them is USB-C. You see, traditional USB-C fast charging over power delivery, which is what pretty much all the laptops and everything uses, well, that's usually capped at 100 watts. Anything above that usually requires non-USB-C, some proprietary barrel plug solution. However, Oppo managed to do a 125 watt charger that is USB-C on both ends. And second, unlike previous generation VOOC fast chargers, this one apparently also supports standard USB power delivery up until 65 watts, which means that in theory, you could use an Oppo smartphone fast charger to charge a device like a Surface Pro, for example, at maximum speed at 65 watts, which I think is pretty dope. There is no clear release date yet. However, Realme has announced their 125 watt Ultra Dart charger, which is basically just a rebranded version of this Oppo fast charging tech, which means it shouldn't be too far off now. And I guess if Oppo is giving it to Realme, they're also going to give it to OnePlus. They're all, after all, related. So should be soon. And I'm quite excited. Oh, and I've also found this random article sponsored by Oppo where they actually claim that they now license at least part of their fast charging technology to 23 other manufacturers. They wouldn't tell me exactly which manufacturers those are, 
but that means that probably most of their competitors, like Xiaomi, like Vivo, which all have their own fast charging tech, probably license at least some, if not all of their core technologies from Oppo, which means that Oppo seems just way ahead of the race here. All right, my fail of the week is gonna have to be the most epic Twitter meltdown we've seen in a really long time. By now you have probably heard of it, but basically on Wednesday, all the biggest Twitter accounts, Joe Biden, Barack Obama, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Apple, Uber, basically everyone, except for suspiciously Donald Trump, hmm. <laughs> basically everyone tweeted out exactly the same message, which is of course a scam. It goes like this. Hey, here's my Bitcoin wallet. You send me $1,000 worth of Bitcoin and I, because I'm so kind and generous, I'll send you back 2000. This is of course one of the oldest internet scams in the world and it seems quite obvious in retrospect, but of course for some people, right as it happens in some situations, it kind of seems real, right? Some of the accounts that got hacked were, for example, Mr. Beast. His whole brand is giving away money essentially for free on the internet. Or Elon Musk, his whole brand is doing crazy meme lord things on the internet to build hype around his companies. So in some situations, I can see why people thought it was real. And Bitcoin wallets are of course public, so we can actually see how well the scam worked. At the time of the recording of this video, the wallet has received almost 400 transactions worth around $117,000. And then Twitter basically confirmed what we were all thinking, which is that it's not that all of these accounts suddenly all got hacked at the same time. Instead, what happened most likely is that an attacker got essentially admin access to all of the Twitter accounts through a social engineering attack against a Twitter employee. And that is kind of more worrying than the scam itself. Like if these hackers were actually able to tweet from any account that they selected, they probably also had access to the private messages, to the activity logs, basically any kind of user data from any of the accounts that they selected. And that seems to be worth a lot more than just the $117,000 that they collected. So I think Twitter is gonna get sued all over the place. And fun fact, the official Apple Twitter account never had an organic, regular tweet before this incident. They only ever had Twitter ads, which means that this scam tweet is actually officially Apple's first ever tweet. Welcome to Twitter, Apple. All right, as for Crowd, my product review app, I actually have a teaser. This is Crowd in dark mode. It's literally the most requested feature ever since we have shipped and we have just finished the designs and started actually working on the development of it. Not quite sure when it will ship in the app yet, but should be soon now. And as always, we also have a new tech quiz for you to test your tech knowledge on. We have 20 brand new questions so you can see how many of them you can get right. If you get 15 of them right, as always, you can choose to get an invite to Crowd so you can also start reviewing your gadgets on the Crowd platform or you can just take it for fun. Links for everything are down in the description. Thank you very much for watching the Friday Checkout. If you haven't realized yet, this is a second channel of mine. So if you're not subscribed to this one yet, you should subscribe. Uh, if you have any suggestions for next week Friday Checkout, you can tweet them at me at TechAltar and I'll see you next Friday. Mm -hmm.